Hello and welcome to episode 61 of the DevaCast. This is a weekly podcast where the three of us come together each week to talk about K-pop and what's current in the industry. Uh, this week we got three album reviews and a topic which was submitted by one of you guys who are listening. Um, so we'll be talking about uh, unpopular K-pop opinions that we've got, which is a question we were asked last week. Um, WJSN's album. A couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago, yeah. Um, CLC's Black Dress mini album and J-Hope's uh, first mixtape from BTS. So... Uh, as always, I'm joined by Nate. You guys get three English lyrics for one today, because they're all short. Dance with my dress, bling bling on my body, and something in my dress. <laughs> you stole mine. No. <laughs> this is my segment. <laughs> uh, but we get uh, no... No, well, I actually didn't check iTunes reviews, but I'm going to assume there are none. Uh, I'll check right now. Um, but no questions other than, like we said, me saying things. Uh, oh, we got a new rating. They didn't actually nice. type anything, but we have six reviews now. Cool. Um, thank you to whoever uh, reviewed so, us. Yeah, rated thank us. you for the rating. Um, and, yeah, we uh, me saying things posted our first questions. So that's our first topic today uh, for a couple of weeks back. But we haven't gotten any other questions, so... Nothing to answer. Yep. If you have anything to ask us, um, any questions you want us to answer on the podcast, leave it down below. Uh, Either on SoundCloud, tweet us, or put on YouTube, anything. Uh, And I'm also joined by Andrew, who usually has three things. Number one, uh, it's March, so you know what that means? March is the smart weather. No, March March Madness. Yeah, it, it starts on Tuesday, basically. So, 64... God, is it 60? No, it's 68 teams now. 68 teams trying to... And I, I believe I said this last year, but yeah, the odds of predicting a perfect March Madness bracket is like one in one billion. Like, it's so hard, but I'll try again. We'll see. Uh, I love college basketball, or I love following this time of year for college basketball, so that should be fun. Uh, number two, uh, the image I've had up on the overlay has been... This wonderful uh, Jordan 3, uh, which is a special sole edition of, not, not sole as in like the bottom of the shoe, but it's a, it's a S-E-O-U-L. Jordan, oh, you will. Yeah, it's, it's a Jordan 3 Soul. that ha- has the uh, Korean flag on the tongue, and it was mm. only sold in Korea, specifically at the uh, Jordan store in Hongdae, and like I believe they sold it online, so... Uh, when it dropped earlier this week, uh, the line basically went like all the way around the block, right? Because basically, like in Korea, just like they don't really have like they don't really care about brand names necessarily. They, they care all they care about is just like ridiculous hype, or like they basically obviously like stuff like Jordan is gonna sell out insane. And right now, the resale price for a size nine, which is my size, the or the the retail price for this was two hundred US. So, how many won would that be exactly? Like I don't know, like. Like it's uh, two mil- no, no, it'd be two million. Two what? million? No, it'd two be two hundred thousand. Two hundred dollars? <laughs> yeah, yeah two hundred thousand. Oh yeah, yeah, two hundred thousand. So yeah, yeah. two hundred thousand. Sorry, so that'd be two hundred thousand won. The resale price right now is going for almost one thirteen hundred dollars. That's one three zero zero. That's you're basically yeah. So that'd be one thousand or one million. That'd be one million three hundred. Yeah. Yeah, just about. Not yeah, exactly. Because there were there's less than one thousand pairs of these shoes made, and they were only sold in Korea. So it's insane. Like, like if I had if I had a lot of money, I would have like flown to Korea and waited out there for them. Because the, like the the price on these are insane, and like they're never gonna make them again. Probably for the for as far yep. as I know. So that's I mean, that. it's still cheaper to buy them right now than to fly there and pay two hundred dollars for. Them. Well, no, what I was thinking is if we go to Korea next year, and so well, actually, no, the thing is, though, the resale price there is probably going to be really expensive to now. But uh, <laughs> I was thinking, like, maybe somebody might have, like, a pair that they're, they're going to get rid of or, like, they're looking to sell. And if I'm in Korea, then why not? But that's a lot. That's, like, my entire flight, basically, there. Okay, number three. On, what was it, Thursday? Yeah, on Thursday, we got a very important Nintendo Direct announcing something very, yes. very important to my my, my life. Which was a new Smash Brothers, so once that comes you mean out, Okami. 
HD <laughs> Switch. <laughs> no, you Smash mean Brothers. there was no information on Metroid Prime 4, so it was useless. No, okay. I mean we're getting a Solaire Amiibo. <laughs> we're getting a Praise the Sun Amiibo. That's so, true, that was the one good thing out of that. Yeah, so a lot of Nintendo stuff coming out. and it's, I'm just putting it here now. Hatsune Miku for Smash. Hatsune Miku for oh Smash. God, you heard it no. here first. <laughs> Go- Actually, no. Oh my goodness! Sana for Smash. Goku? No, not even joking. Goku for Smash. I think it could happen. No, Goku is probably is a possibility. Yeah, Bandai how Namco. Big, makes yeah, and how Dragon big? Ball games. How big Dragon Ball is now? And with Dragon Ball Fighter Z being popular, yeah, I to- I could totally, st- yeah. And people have been begging for it for years. <laughs> I doubt it'll ever happen. Like no, it, it, it was no. a joke back in the day where like be like Goku Cloud, um, <laughs> like Master Chief, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but Cloud is actually in Smash now. <laughs> well, yeah. Shrek. And Goku probably will be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mega Man was another one that people yeah, liked. It's, a, it's it, a joke. It's another, it's it all happened. these joke people. It's that funny that Cloud is even in Smash because he was never He's on never, a I know. console. <laughs> Wait, so, that's okay. Well, the new one will probably have Noctis. He yeah. also wasn't on Switch yet. Yet. We'll yeah. see. Anyway, that, those are my three things. And again, I keep apologizing for my voice because I am still very sick right now. So, thank you. Jacob. And Jacob doesn't okay. have blown out. Nope. Spoilers. Nope. <laughs> All right, so I guess we can get right into the first topic. Um, uh, yeah, unpopular K-pop opinions. Yep, and, so uh, yeah, uh, please we'll don't, don't unsubscribe to us if you don't agree with us. We're going to try to be civil about this stuff. Um... But we're probably going to piss some of you off. I probably will, for sure. <laughs> I um, So, first one, though. It's just the least offensive one. Bop is a very dumb term and overused to hell. I don't know. It's just like everything is literally described as that now. If someone likes a song in the K-pop industry, that is how they describe a song. And I think it's dumb. It's a stupid-sounding term for a song. And, <laughs> like... I don't know. It's just insanely overused. I, I I'd say to go with that. Another overused term is they they quote snatched my weave or they snatched yeah. my wig. I'm just is that like, a thing? Oh, yeah, I didn't notice that yeah, that much. It, it, it's kind of oh, also hard. shook. Yeah, shook using is, that shook shook, is the one. shook and bop are the two ones that make me angry because well, I mean, shook is like uh, it's so dumb. I mean, it's 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 kind of an indicator of like the average the, the age. Age, yeah, a hundred percent. I it's a hundred percent an indicator of the like average age of K-pop fans. You mean that they're all like fifteen? Yes, <laughs> we're basically the old man well, yelling I'm, at I'm clouds old, right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> exactly. It's <laughs> like these damn kids and their Get off their my lawn. fancy slang that's stupid to me because I'm way too old to think it's funny or <laughs> fun. Mm. Yeah, calling stuff bop and saying shook are the two things. I, I meant to add shook to this, but I forgot about it. Um, but yeah, so that's like an inoffensive one. But I would say it's unpopular overall to Cause so many K-pop fans. Because so, yeah, most of the K-pop fans are younger and actually use those terms. Okay, now we're getting to the heavy hitters, which Andrew and Jacob don't agree with this next one. Number two, I Jessica is not part of SNSD to me. And now I want to preface this. I don't hate Jessica. I don't hate her for leaving. I don't like, I listen to her music. Um, I just don't subscribe to OT9 because to me, Jessica, so Jessica had a choice. It was pretty obvious why she left. Everyone can agree that she left because she wanted to focus on her fashion brand and, and she her, was done and her boyfriend. doing, and her boyfriend and she was she didn't want to spend so much time working on music and touring and stuff that she had to if she stayed with SNSD. Um, so, and I don't, I don't blame her for that. I understand fully why she did it. I don't hate her, but to me, that means she broke her contract to put herself above the group. And so to me, she left the group willingly. And so I don't count her as part of SNSD. It's not like mm. Tiffany and Soyeon and Too Young, where they waited until the contract was up and everyone left amicably. She was just, she like left in the middle of her contract because she wanted to work on her own stuff more. So she put herself over the group is how I how I see it, and because of that, I don't really count her as part of SNSD anymore. Mm. 
So that's the reason. I didn't like I said, I don't hate her, I listen to her music. But to me, SNSD is OT8. Uh, for me, I think she was just there for too long for me to counter out. There's too yeah. much like, Well, yeah, I, and I understand there, that. So there's there's, there's that. the history and stuff. But just the reasons why, to me, it felt like she betrayed the group and the fans. Mm. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's kind of... I feel. I like mean, and and we'll never like. Oh, maybe we'll in ten know. ten years we'll know if someone, like Tiffany, writes a book or something, or just says it on a random interview because she doesn't care anymore. Or someone, one of them, just doesn't care, and there it's way gone in the past. But mm. like, we're never gonna know anytime soon. So this is all based on like the speculation. the most obvious speculation. Like it, we. Everyone pretty much knows she left because of the fashion brand, like, and she had disagreed with how much she could work on it with SM and, like, that type of stuff. It's it's pretty obvious that's why. There might be other reasons, like, for all we know, she got into a huge fight with everyone, but I don't want to speculate that type of stuff. Like, the fashion mm-hmm. brand is the pretty obvious thing that she would have left for. Um, she probably was just tired of, or she pro- I think another factor into why she left was probably she didn't, yeah, it's probably a lot of clashes with sm like oh yeah I, yeah I, i'm I, not one of those people that thinks they got in a huge fight and hate each other no i think she it was more i think it's more the SM label or and the, but yeah. yeah but it's still definitely uh, like hurt the group i would say mm. overall oh, yeah because i i'm sure they did because i don't know how much of how much they knew before it yeah, actually happened because I mean, remember uh, the picture I have up right now is uh, Jessica in the uh, Je- with they are they had already Catch filmed me if you can yeah they had already filmed Catch Me If You yeah, Can yeah. and then they had to go after they had this to refilm whole, it. like uh, after the whole debacle they had to go refilm it because without Jessica because it was just so sudden so yeah it, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah uh, it, by the way thank you to whoever leaked that I was on that like immediately as <laughs> soon as I caught a whiff of this this exists I was on Tumblr the entire day looking for yeah for the, I, I, for the, I downloaded that, that to be released yeah I did yeah. as well it's just it's crazy how these things just find their way to the internet or whatever because I mean obviously I'm sure you're getting huge trouble because it's that this was never meant to see the light of day especially yeah. after the, the whole how poorly yeah I, I'd say well I even that's even the the version of the song I listened to is the one that has Jessica in it. So, hmm. yeah. But it's only in Japanese. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't care either. But yeah, it's weird how it's only the <laughs> Japanese version that got leaked. So Yeah. Well, it was originally supposed to be a Japan only release. Uh, so. Okay. so they so, might have never filmed the so they, yeah, so they, it. So they recontextualized it into a current, just like filming the music video in Korean for when they actually released it with eight members. But yeah, yeah. It, yeah for as much as I love Jessica, it could it could have been, she could have handled leaving better. Yeah, I think yeah. SM could have also handled it better. Oh, I think than I, I'm, I'm, not blaming, I'm, I'm not blaming. I'm not blaming her 100. And no, it would definitely SM had a a big part in it. And no shade to Tyler Kwan, but I feel I still feel like he was a he was a sort of like a big influence into why she sort of left because she felt like she could just do her. Yeah, she it, could just go to his label that he created for her. Yeah, and and yeah, in a way, like she. She she probably was kind of tired of the kind of music that so she was doing because I mean, like I don't know if this isn't a controversial opinion or not, but after a while, I feel like so she was kind of getting stale until like mm, I don't know I don't the, know. I mean, I the music she put out now is still was, teen pop. Well, no, yeah, like, and Mister Mister was I, awesome. Up and uh, I, I feel like, like right twenty thirty. No, no, like yeah, Mister Mister was one of my favorites, but I feel like in terms of like I, I felt like they were kind of going, I, I it did it, it felt kind of stale to me, but it felt uh, which. I guess it, blessing and a curse. Whereas, like when Jessica left, I feel like li- the whole Lionheart era sort of like revitalized Sochi, and it, it, I think we're all in agreement that that's sort of their best era of music, which is kind of, or uh, at least for me, or like they, it might not be the most nostalgic, but I feel like the like their best music came out like post Jessica, <laughs> uh, mm, like I don't know, no, no shade or whatever, but yeah, I. I don't know, it's too hard for me. I just love SNSD's music too much. And yeah, this is... Preface this, I don't know if you if anyone's listening to this that doesn't really know us, but I'm like a huge, huge SNSD fan. Like, they're, they were my first... That's, that's they're what my brought all-time us together, favorite basically. And this is like yep. my first K-pop group that I followed. I have all their albums. So like, 
That's why I felt like this was a super controversial opinion for me to have, because I feel like most people that were in my situation are like OT9 forever. Like, yeah, I'll still be OT9. Stuff. And I think so. Yeah, I, think one day I definitely am. I'm not going to yeah. just like, well, and yeah. it's like, and, I th- yeah, I think one that's day what I want to say. I think one that's day what I want to say. Like, is, I don't have anything against her. I don't have any, like, I don't hate her. I still listen to her music. I have all of her music on my in my library. I paid. For, I bought it all on iTunes. But even even I don't do that, and I love Jessica. It's just part of. I don't know. I felt. I, 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 I definitely right felt. Since the I, I definitely <laughs> felt a little betrayed when it happened. So that's why. Well, at least she wasn't pregnant. <laughs> oh, poor you will he. <laughs> Poor Laboom. Laboom tossed, lost two members last year. Well, this slash last year. I'm so sad. Uh, Although, ZN will be back. With a vengeance. Alright. Okay. We'll move on to my third, which is probably more controversial than that one. <laughs> but it's more personal taste. I just don't like to anyone that much. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, any to anyone fans, I'm sorry. But, like, so... And I once again I have all their music on in on, like I have it all I listen to it every once in a while but it's definitely not my favorite. Mm. Um, I just to me so it probably all starts because when I got into K-pop I was SNSD only and that was <laughs> the height of the fan wars for old girl groups where yeah. I refused to listen to to anyone and Wonder Girls for a long time because I, I was this SNSD. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I like Wonder Girls, I love, but I, I refused to listen to them for a while because they were like main rivals and to anyone I refused to listen to. Also, before any of K pop existed for me, uh, my brother sent me Lollipop and that made me, that's probably, that's probably the root cause of all this. The first K pop song I ever heard was Lollipop by 21 and Big Bang, and I was like, this is the most garbage song I've ever heard. It's just, and then it, luckily, it's just like a trigger for you now, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then luckily, G came along and saved me like a year later. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I don't know, I just, I don't, it's not the type of music I like, I don't like the, like, for their early stuff, I don't like the super auto-tuned, like, EDM type stuff, like, I like EDM, but but the super auto-tuned stuff, yeah, and I don't even, I think, like, post, like, I don't, see, that's the thing, I like 4 Minute More. And I don't know why I like four well, minute more then, than four minute. Anyone. Four minute was their main competitor, so yeah. And I, but they both did like the same type of stuff. But for some reason, I like four minutes way better. Um, and I don't know why. I can't. I can't explain that. Um, but yeah, I just don't really like that stuff. Um, I thought their style is just ridiculous. Like I didn't. I'm not a huge fan of the whole insanely over the top, spiky outfits, crazy hairstyle type don't worry. stuff. I mean, like as either. much as I- as much as I love Twenty One, a lot of their maybe I am the best I could sort of tolerate, but um, like their early, like their early clothing was really like, bad. Oh yeah, their well, not even their clothing, their hairstyles were or, no, like, oh, like Dara's, uh, yeah, like Dara's tree. hair. I love for the palm tree. That's, that's like so her signature dumb. sort of thing. Yeah, now. it's iconic. I love. Yeah, uh, she, that's that. That's like she has an entire like merchandising brand around palm trees now because of that. <laughs> because but, of it. No, like they. They fucked up Minji's hair for so many years. Yeah. Like she never had a decent haircut. It was so bad. Like her hair uh-huh. right now is really it's it's like fine because she looks so much better with long hair. But there's a lot of cuts where she just like oh my god, it yeah they. I mean I guess that was just kind of the era that K-pop was in where basically you oh. just had to look really stupid and like that's just like <laughs> eye catching and that sort of thing. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean I've always in like I've always leaned towards the cutesy, more innocent girl group stuff over that type of stuff. Like, Foreman I love, but and but I feel like to anyone was, like, a step past four minute, and that was, like, the line I didn't cross, like, in terms of what I liked. Um, if that makes sense. Like, for four minute was, like, the subdued version of to anyone. If you could see that. Like, their outfits weren't insane. Their hairstyles weren't insane. The, well, their music was pretty similar. But... Like, in terms of styling and stuff, if yeah. that makes sense. Um, But yeah, so, like, 
It's kind of know. weird because for me, like uh, my first groups were SNSD, then Four Minute, then Twenty One. So like those are yeah. like those groups all go well, hand in hand for me. Well, yeah, it's and that's interesting. for me. It's SNSD, Kara, and Four Minute. Yeah. So like because I, that's probably another reason why I found I listened to Four Minute when because they weren't a rival to SNSD, but to mm. anyone was because of the whole Big Three rivalry. Yeah. So like I didn't really listen to Twenty One until way later. Mm. Yeah. Cause, and I mean, for me, obviously, I saw uh, Soshi, like, this is my first exposure to, like, K-pop in person, and then I saw 20, 21 at MTV Iggy, so I don't know, I just never really, ca- or, th- there was a point, I think I actually liked 21 better than, than Girls' Generation, because I wasn't into the, like, the too girly stuff or whatever, <laughs> which is why I, 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 was, I was leaning YG more, but that all changed when, I guess I started to lean SM more when S- EXO came out or EXO started mm-hmm. to come around because they, mm-hmm. that I feel like that's when SM started to change their image in in a way. So, yeah, but yeah, I, I, I feel you. Twenty one wasn't for everybody, I guess. It's just yeah, yeah. In re- in retrospect, a lot of their songs are just kind of hard to listen to now. Like, freaking Dar had a solo uh, on I forget which album it was. It's like. Uh, I just want to kiss. I never want to miss. I'm just yeah. like, yo, what the heck? Like, I how, thought that one was good. Like, how, I mean, yeah, it's catchy, but I'm just like, yo, how bad, how bad of like a, how bad of a human being do you have to be? It's like, oh, I missed. Oh, I missed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you actually think about what she's saying. Like, uh. Yeah, like, like a lot of it is just like really like weird and corny stuff, but I mean... Yeah. yeah, no, it's 21 still has, and, so, yeah. yeah, it was such like a weird time period. Yeah, like, no, I feel like it's so much easier to get people to K-pop now because, again, it started to sound more like Western music, whereas K-pop back then was yeah. just like, yo, what the more hell like is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very much more J-pop, like closer to J-pop than Western music. And, and now it's you, leading yeah, more if you, Western. If you look at J-pop... Plus, there's, there's so much more now, so there's something yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Where back then, there was like... There was yeah, there was SMSD with the more girly stuff. There was anyone with the weird, weird like hip hop techno stuff, and like there wasn't much in between. Yeah, it, if you still look at J-pop now, there's a lot of groups that still dress like weird like that or whatever. So it's, oh, yeah, it's yeah, interesting yeah. to see the the, the divergence yeah. it, that happened. Yeah, and, uh, I, and Andrew, I don't want to still do the like anime hair and stuff like they used oh, to. Like yeah, like, yeah. K-pop like got rid spiky, of that like post two thousand eight. Spiky <laughs> cloud hair, Goku hair. Um, and I don't want to take anything away from 21. I, like, I know, like, why they were big. I, like, I fully understand and appreciate what they did for K-pop and, like, why they're so big. But their music just wasn't for me. Mm. And, like, still, for the most part, isn't there. I like some songs. Like, I'll still jam out to I Am The Best. But, like, for the most part, it's just, like, since I didn't grow up or, like, I didn't, Grow up, because I I started listening to K-pop when I was twenty two. Uh, but I'm not even twenty one. <laughs> um, I'm not grow up with it. But since I, I didn't yeah. listen to it from the start, like it's not nostalgic to me, and but, so it's just. See, I have the opposite problem where I can't listen to Twenty One's music anymore because it hurts too damn much that they're gone. Oh, because so. they they're gone. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I can't it, listen to it anymore. Well, that's like yeah, it's yeah when when SNSD disbands. It's gonna, it's gonna be tough. Or mm-hmm. whenever I listen to Downpour, <laughs> <laughs> don't do that to yourself, Dave. Please, All right. it pops up randomly. I can't control it. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to Andrews. Okay, what's my number one again? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't have the thing oh, up yeah. in front of me. Number one, Wuju Sonyo, also known as Cosmic Girls. Their singles are better in Chinese. Crazy talk. Okay, like I, I don't know why. I don't know why I can <laughs> see exactly. I can explain this. It's your genes. Maybe, yeah, it's maybe. Your genes. <laughs> but the thing is, though, it's it. The thing is, though, like my uh, my family, like it's their heritage. We don't speak. Uh, as far as I know, my family never spoke Mandarin. They spoke Cantonese. So it's not like I have any like preference for Mandarin or anything. Is it Ma- Cantonese and Mandarin are basically two different languages? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's probably just because like I. It's probably just because they have so many like literally like one like eighth of the of Wuju Sonyo is Chinese. So they probably have. So I feel like they can pull it off like. Well, when they sing in Chinese, I mean, granted, like Xyz raps are still in Korean or whatever, but I, and usually, I don't know, maybe the reason why I like Uju Sanya uh, songs in in Chinese a lot is because it's probably the closest thing I'll ever get to having XOM again, because because <laughs> it's mm-hmm. it's just gone now. So I mean, and yeah, I feel like to some degree, I feel like the songs were ki- are kind of at least the songs where they do have Chinese singles. I feel like they they sort of like work with that in mind because remember. uh Wuju Sonyo, it's not just uh, what should we call it, Starship or whatever. Like they, 
or they they're co- yeah that's with I forget I forget the, the, the name of the company Ue Ue Ha yeah yeah so there's there's they're kind of co-managed between two groups which is why like they they sometimes they or why uh, the Wuju Sonyo the Chinese members they do they're part of like their the Produce One Hundred One or like the whatever other like idol yeah. producing shows but in yeah China the, the three the three Chinese yeah. members are technically part of that agency yeah they're, they're and, uh, this, like loaned to Starship like they're under Starship but they're yeah, also yeah, under that company yeah uh so yeah basically so I believe it, it makes sense that they'd sort of like consider or produce their songs with the Chinese market in mind as well because it's yeah because yeah. it, yeah, it's it's probably the easy it, it's easiest to market like k-pop the Chinese uh the Chinese for, like fan base if there's actual like Chinese members in it too mm-hmm. so yeah, it, it just seems to work so well. Like, I don't know why, but I love their song. Like, yeah, they're like Secret and I Wish. I listen to in Chinese, like, more than even in Korean. It just sounds... It, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's kind of like how, like, some, like, Soshi songs were. I, I first heard in Japanese. They listen and, to Japanese versions. Yeah, and if I listen to the Korean version, I'm just like, yo, that's so weird now. So I, <laughs> I, I skip every Japanese version usually. I'm, yeah, if I'm me used too. to the Korean I'm version, like, I'm oh, like, oh yeah, it, it sounds playing. so weird. I'm like, I don't know these words, <laughs> but in, it, to me, like, I, I, yeah, because they've they've been doing Chinese singles from the start. Like even their debut singles, they have Chinese versions. Um, but just to me, I don't like the way Chinese sounds for pop music. It just it's just so weird compared to Korean because it sounds so different. Oh, yeah, and I'm so used to listening to Korean. Yeah, the hardest part about like Mandarin or Cantonese or, Thai, or like, all these like Chinese or originated like uh, languages is that it's all tonal. Yeah, they're tonal. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you could say some the same word, word, but it, with a different like intonation of your voice, you yeah. can say something yep. offensive by accident. Or whatever, yeah, yeah. Which is why I'm, yeah, I'm so scared to learn it because I, I don't yeah. want to say like I. You I, don't like, like, I, I screwed your mom or something like that by accident or whatever. Yeah. And, like, so, yeah, it's just, like, it's so different sounding from Korean. Like, Japan, like Japanese is, like, closer. It's it's well, a lot they, more they similar. Have, Japanese and Korean have the same, like, like the same grammar structure for the yeah, most yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, so, like, uh, that I can handle. Chinese different. is way different. Yeah. So, it just sounds weird to me. So, I, I skip their Chinese versions, like, every time. Just, like. Like I said, with Japanese versions, I do that too, where I know the song, because then I'm just like, these aren't the lyrics to the song I'm trying to sing along to. Yeah, I'll be like, I'll be like, Genie will come on, I'll be yep. like, yes, it's Genie, and then I hear, oh, Yobi, Yobi, and I'm like, no! Hey, the the Japanese version of Genie is amazing, but 90... I know, but I am always wanting the Korean version. He wants to sing the Korean version. Yeah, because that's literally my favorite K-pop song of all time. Like, come on. But the Japanese version of Genie is, like, 90% of the reason why the Japanese version of Genie is amazing is because or specifically the Japanese version of Genie, the dance music video is just off the charts. Like it's insane. Mm. Just like those mm. outfits are just like that's my favorite SSD like outfit probably ever. So, <laughs> all right, number two, FX has the best version of Chocolate Love. So for those of you that might not have Wrong. been born or might not False. have been, <laughs> <laughs> or for my, might not have like been around in the K-pop world back then. It was a LG. It was like LG an LG chocolate. promotion because LG it chocolate. Was LG chocolate commercial. Did any of you have an LG chocolate? No, I had an oh, MV3. I sister. thought about buying one because of because of chocolate. <laughs> <love. No. laughs> I was no, tempted. It almost got me. Our hail, hail corporate. It almost got me. No, but I mean. <laughs> LG had a similar marketing push in America where they had if Tiffany uh, tells me to buy something I buy it okay yeah because when they were pushing the uh, the LG chocolate here in America they had Christina Aguilera do a song called Candyman or whatever because it's like oh it's a candy was that, was that an LG chocolate commercial song yeah I didn't know that I mean, at least that's that's how that's when I first heard the song or whatever. We, they had that whole like marketing campaign where like they were covering the phones and it looked like chocolate or whatever. like it basically like because it was like red and like black and like, yeah yeah that's that thing yeah so that's why they that's why they called it chocolate love because right? of the, the phone. So SM and their like which is a genius idea too. They had their two of their girl groups FX and uh, Girls Generation do two different versions of the song and sort of. How they linked the music videos in a way where like they'd give you a tease of the other music video first before it At went to like end, the certain yeah. other group's song and then like it was pretty cool how they did that. But like I don't know, maybe it's because I first heard Chocolate Love as the FX version. So when I listen to the Soshi version, it just feels so slow and it, it just feels kind of boring in comparison to oh, the. Oh no, version. I love it! 
I love it. No, I like slow I like slow and sensual. No, I love I love I love like the like the crazy fast version. And I mean, hey, we get an the Soshi version doesn't have an amber wrap. That makes it immediately better. Come on. Nope. <laughs> yeah, no, but no. it's a Tiffany wrap. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> How I'm dare so- you? I'm sorry. The, ra- the, 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 the like the rap portion in the Soshi version is just it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, this is a cover of the SNSD song. <laughs> yeah, this is 100% a cover of that How SNSD dare song. you? How, How dare, dare you say the cover is better than the original? <laughs> hey, yeah, that's, of- that song was not written for the OG Chocolate. <laughs> they just used a Candyman. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, it's just they... they I'm looking it up. But they, yeah, they used it. Yeah, they, they, they used it for like the, the marketing promotion, but... You know, it, it, it it's an interesting look back as well, because I... We don't really see like huge CF songs where like they're mainstream like this anymore. Like I'm trying to think of if there's anything that's sort of come out at least maybe in the past uh, like Sonny's Burger King song. I mean, but I mean like <laughs> No, like nobody nothing, knew like, that any, I'm trying to think like any of like Big Three or whatever that have done like a Big s- Three, um like CFs on in this like sort of scale they where they really gave it a- done many. Yeah. Um recently. Because well, and I think was Lollipop was a promotional song too, right? For some, yeah, it was for a phone. Yeah, so what? Well, yeah, obviously, like freaking South Korea and their phone manufacturing. Of course, like half the songs, half the CF songs are going to be out. Fo- well, yeah, I mean, two of the biggest phone manufacturers are in Korea, which is LG and Samsung. Yeah, so yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, I can't think of the big three doing anything recently for songs. Like the the more recent CF songs I can think of are like. The Baskin Robbins song by Orange Carmel a couple of years ago, which is one of my favorites. Um, I, there's, I, I mean, there's Jelly or what was it, the one with uh, Hyoden and Kisum. I don't even uh, remember. Fruity. Oh, that was uh, like, the was one like, last year. Was that like for like Sunny D or something? That, like that? It was for uh, it was yeah it was for <laughs> uh, not Lipton, Sunny not Sunny D. <laughs> it's like yeah, it was right. for a drink. Yeah, but yeah. Sprite? No, it it wasn't. It was a like fruit drink, obviously. Oh, and um, freaking uh, Jay Park did a, a Nike oh, like, CF like rap sort yeah. of thing. But I mean, other than that, yeah, we don't was, really get like big songs. Where I guess it's K- K-pop has sort of moved beyond that, where they don't necessarily need to be promoting yeah. like brands by song anyway. You just they just have to show up for like a photo yeah, yeah, shoot yeah, or whatever. Exactly. Now. They just do photo yeah, it's, shoots, it, it so. was an interesting time back then. They still do them every once in a while. But yeah. Oh yeah, it was Lipton. It was Lipton. It's so weird. Anyway. My number three, which is probably my most controversial one. Quote. Just, I, I really need to put this in context before like people like yell at me. Hyano's overt sexuality is no longer a progressive statement. It's an artistic crutch. Now, I what, agree. I, now what I mean by that is that... Uh, it's back, just getting out of hand. Well, not, not, it's not necessarily getting out of hand. It's just that it's getting really stale. They're, just, they're relying yeah, yeah, on it that's, over that's and over I mean. and over again. Yeah, like not uh, changing anything. So if yeah. you look at the landscape, if you look at the landscape of K-pop when Hyuna made sub, when Hyuna made Bubble Pop, like it was sort of in a time period, or I guess it, it, it still to some degree it was sort of in a time period where I guess most Korean music was just incredibly uber like conservative, and I guess in a way where like you know how like all like the QT girl group like sort of concepts were that, that's all there were basically it was either that or just like I guess some type of like fierce girl group sort of thing but they never like veered on the line of like too overtly sexual and then Bubble Pop came yeah. out and that sort of like I guess changed the game in a way but yeah yeah after that Sistar came out and yeah like Sistar the, Nine Muses and the like more sexy girl groups but they're like classy sexy yep. yeah and I feel like groups. and like I, I feel like Kiana's kind of been surpassed in that sort of way in that I guess how I'm thinking of it is that I feel like Kiana is just held back by the fact that oh I want to push the boundaries I want to be so sexy I want to like um like put like be so progressive that she kind of forgets about the musical aspect of it yep. to oh, some yeah, degree 100%. and I'm just like like if all you're doing is pushing the sexy kind of part of like the performance it's just like there's not much that separates you but something between like you and like i don't know like Leisha or something like that I would say be- are you going to compare Shana to Switch and Leisha Yeah no well, I mean <laughs> the- I know that sounds really harsh but like I know it is but I I know where you're coming from like Yeah because like, there, ha- there still has to be some element of if, musicality in, in yeah, your music you- because that's cuz yeah the, 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 it has to be intertwined with some that element of musicality, or else it's you're just kind of like 
beating a dead horse at this point because it's yeah, just she, so bland. She needs she needs some like after last year is just like that just swath of mediocre music from her. Yeah. Um uh, she needs to start doing more like like I said like more classy sexy like Nine Muse's last song, last few songs or like Hush and Touch by Miss A or yep. like Sistar's more recent stuff like the Not Summer stuff like give it give it to me type stuff where it's just it's sexy but it's classy. Yeah. She's just starting to veer into like like trashy. you said just like trashy like yeah, I mean, doing it. There, there's nothing wrong like, with trashy. It's just that no and like it it, it gets again. It, it just, it gets just gets old if you do yeah, it. Yeah, it gets over. really stale yeah. because it's just like okay, what what else do you have to like? Because I feel like yeah, there's only so much you could. There's only so far you could take the shock value of oh my god, she's doing what and she's Korean. Oh, or oh my god, she's twerking again yeah, for the fortieth time. Yeah, it just it gets really old after a while, and uh, yeah. like. And I remember when it was just like, oh my god, she did a kiss on stage, or whatever. Now I'm just like, yeah. It's and like just, even, it's so like she can do trashy still. She just needs to make the music good. Like I'd be fine if she did more the same style, but the music just wasn't lacking. Yeah, I, like if, it has I been. guess that's probably more of the problem. Where it's just like I feel like you can get away with it more if you make good music as well. And I feel like people, people are more inclined. I feel like most people are more inclined to like it because it, they feel like, oh my god, she's being so sexy, and I'm just like, and they kind of forget about like the actual song because of that con- the whole concept of it, or like it gets it gets too much of a pass because like it's being so like progressive. But at this point, I'm just <laughs> yeah. I'm just really bored of her 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 music, and she needs she needs to like do something else, honestly, or just like change it up somehow because yeah. yeah. The, because I feel like there's been no musical progression since Bubble Pop, and like I know that's that's a lot because that's like six years worth of music. Mm-hmm. But I feel like yeah, it's just where like so many other artists and groups have gone from like here to here, or like it, it just feels like kind of get been so stagnant. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. That that wraps up my sort of controversial opinions, and I hope I don't get crucified. <laughs> so none of mine are really all that uh, controversial. Yeah, Jacob, between us. Jacob was like was a wimp. Yeah, I don't really have any like overly controversial opinions, I guess. Um I don't think at least off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, you couldn't think of any. Um but uh one of them is I never really liked BAP that much. Like I I don't think I ever see people online giving a negative opinion of them even though they're not huge. I guess they're but they were pretty big back in the day. I always just uh kind of saw them as being really really cheesy like versus like even like Big Bang, who I don't think were the pinnacle of hip hop, they were still not like they didn't come off as just completely cheesy and too try hard. Like they at least would like um I don't know, like own their concept, I guess. Like BAP You saw always, them as like they tried to do they they tried They're to trying do, to be hard, but they're like I can't yeah, take well, them seriously. It's like so comparing them to a newer group, they're like Monster X, but if they went Monster X went like way overboard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because like, like, they're like, they're doing the same type as mo- stuff as Monster X, just like the really hype yeah. hip hop pop. But you saw them as like going too far, where Monster X does it like well. Yeah, exactly. I don't know like, if you agree well, with that. Well, I think but... I th- I don't think Monster X is trying to be something that they're not though. Is, yeah, is my thing. Okay, I guess. you think BAP was like they're trying just to... trying too hard to be hip hop when they're you know they're just when like they're more idol idols just standard you know? idols yeah okay. exactly i just yeah, think, i could, I I could d- see that I just they, feel- just, they just didn't pull it off well i guess in my mind yeah i feel like just people i feel like a lot of people just don't or aren't familiar with him to oh, some degree nowadays well. no yeah no. nowadays but like uh, like back when i first like got into when K-pop, they were popular like, like yeah. 2012 2013 they yeah. they were pretty big and i can attest that cuz when i was over there like all of the f- girls I was friends with were like really big BAP fans. Mm. They all love BAP, and that's how I got into them. Um, yeah. And I liked them, and I I totally understand where you're coming from. They definitely were like going way too hard um, when they, it didn't really fit them very well. Um, and they and that's why they after their first three or four, they started doing more like poppy yeah. stuff, like. Uh, what is it? I can't remember the names of the songs, but because like the first three, like Warrior Power and One Shot, other, One Shot, or like yeah, that stuff. 
One shot. I'll, side note: One shot is an amazing music video. Though. Yes, it does. It, it actually does, has a really good. It music is a video, really though. awesome music <laughs> video. Go watch One Shot's music video. Um, but yeah, after that, they they did some more cutesy stuff. Um, yeah. But after but, that, they'd already like got yeah, they like, were sort no, of carved out a niche, and then yeah, they're like, yeah. then their fans are like, what the it. hell? Yep. Yeah. So then they fall so, off a cliff because they're fighting with TS. TS. Yep. Um. But. You but you also uh, you liked their re- more recent yeah stuff their more. their newer stuff is a lot that, better than their old stuff because they're not they like, put out three songs last year that first one I can never remember the name of it was really good the like one about like depression and stuff yeah yeah that one was really really good um, they're the like apocalypse looking music video. yeah they're well, yeah they're just in yeah, like yeah. dark apartment that's like completely destroyed yeah um. um but yeah, I guess uh, I, their newer stuff I will say is a lot better. I I actually have said that in the past. Like, yeah, it's I don't you know. Just I guess thought it's more they started off on the wrong foot. I guess. Yeah, exactly. And now they've matured and they know what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. So, yep. yeah, yeah, I I understand that. I I enjoy power and and that stuff for the ridiculousness ridiculousness that it is. Yeah. But I can see where you come from. Yep. So, on to my second one, which you'll see it and you'll be like, what? Cause, cause, all right, I was about so, to yell at him when I saw this. Yeah, so, mine, so my second one was that Spica is overrated, and not in the way that you might think. So, I really like them and I like their music. However, whenever people online are talking about, uh, like they talk trash about a vocalist in a K-pop group, they'll always be like, well, Spica, all of them are really good. And they always are used, they always use Spica as an example of group of a group that has really good vocalists. But here's the thing. I'm 90% sure that almost none of them actually listen to Spica. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. Like it, yep. that always annoyed me so much. And I'm like, okay. they are not this popular to where they can be mentioned like every five seconds in a comment section. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, like, I understand where you're coming from. So you, you, you agree with those people that Spica has really good vocalists, yes. but those people don't have the right to use that as an example because they don't know Spica at all. Probably they just yeah, hear they just, about them all the time. And yeah, so they're exactly. like, Oh, well they must have really good vocalists. So yeah, I could, I definitely agree with that. Cause they, if they were, that popular they wouldn't have disbanded last year <laughs> yeah exactly like and i i don't think almost any of their music videos had much over like a million views no no like they, one million like, views if they even made that far like yeah they they definitely didn't get the recognition they deserved this no. is coming from someone who actually <laughs> listens to them and ass for years yeah. um but like they came out the gate running because they were produced yeah. by lee Hori. um yep yeah, tonight has four point. Yeah, well, they're all five million. Okay, all right. That's yeah. Again, tonight, that's, that's tonight, a lot and you don't thought, love me both have about five million. It, it just always used to bug me when people would mention them all the time. When they, I could guarantee they did not listen to them. Oh yeah, yeah like they yeah. they would always be mentioned like in MR removed videos and stuff like that. Like yep. oh, the Sprecher wouldn't sound this bad. Yeah, and like just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um. Like a better example would probably be Mamamoo because Mamamoo's actually yep. they do all, like always perform live. That's why they always have the ad libs and stuff so that they yeah. basically they're prove that they're performing that they're live. live. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, they're very, they're they're definitely very similar in that respect. Like, yeah, but yeah, I I agree with you that a lot of people use them without probably even knowing much about them. Yeah, so I guess that's all I had to say about that one as well. And uh, this one's. Again, not controversial with us, more of like with uh, me disagreeing with netizens in general. So uh, for number three, I said that idols are put under way too much scrutiny. So most of the listeners probably would agree with me as well. But like, yeah, I feel like international fans as a whole would probably agree with you here. Well, even no, even international fans, I have a problem with well, like they okay. Older, just older fans, like fans are international age, fans. I think and more mature fans, yeah. but like, once you, like the long, the younger you get, the less like. Like, uh, there's just a lot of stuff. Like, there's just a lot of cultural differences. I feel like, and they'll say something, and then somebody international will get offended and be like, "Oh, that's so offensive! Okay. I'm so disappointed! I'm never listening to you again." 
Yeah. Or like uh, a netizen will like be like, oh, you can't date someone. I'm going <laughs> to. I feel like yeah. I feel like that's just, just talk trash to you yeah, in, I, I, in your comment section all day because that's my life now. Yeah. I feel like it, it's just like a Korean like mentality sort of thing. Like, we've discussed this, I guess, in, in detail before, but it's not just with idols or whatever. It's not just with like any like sort of like actors. Because I mean, even esports, like they just like, oh, if like Faker yeah. makes it like it's like, oh, Faker, you're garbage. You're terrible. You should kill yourself and that sort of stuff. And yep. like, yeah, that's why they, that's why like all these like athletes or whatever have like crazy like stress and or whatever because yeah they they just yeah. put under so much pressure in Korea because of like yeah. Twitter or like like uh, I don't know like where wherever else they like post like all this like negative sort of shit I feel like yeah, it's just sort of too it's too ingrained into Korean culture at this point yeah but even so again like uh there's some things also like they'll say something on Korean television where they're more conservative and people who are more PC over here would be like, oh, you can't say that. That's 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 so offensive. I'm so disappointed. I've, yeah. So that yeah, always like, that always t- tweaks me out. Like, dude, come on. They just said something. It's not a big deal. It's really not. Just forget about it and move on. <laughs> yeah. Like the Korean fans are like insanely intrusive into their lives and like, yeah put them on an insane high standard and then yep. international fans that will get too upset offended. over by things that uh, are, they all were only said or done because of cultural differences and then yeah. like sure if you don't agree with that or you think it is offensive that's your instead right of just so. it's yeah. your right and instead of just yelling at them you should try to like get people to understand like that your perspective rather than just yeah, yelling at the just idol yelling at them yeah like or fans, another you know? another sort of yeah. example I, I could think of right now is when i know we I, I don't mean to shit on icon all the time but um like remember that situation where they they dressed up as like in like female clothes and they started act, like act, like humping each other or whatever like on stage and like they acted like re- <laughs> they're acting really stupid and everyone's just like oh that's kind of a that's kind of like stupid or whatever like they they took offense to that and then there's that one crazy person or like that one person on Twitter saying like oh if you don't like that that means you're that means you're homophobic or whatever it's like yo whoa yeah, whoa whoa like, like calm yeah. down yeah if it, I also yeah the, 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 I have a huge problem with like. Yeah, it's on both sides of the spectrum where it's like where people are just like, oh, you you you're horrible. You can't do that. You're an idol or whatever. Like they haven't seen high standards for you. Or it's that where people will like they're like lemmings. They'll jump off the bridge to like defend their idol, even if they committed like murder yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think people it, just take everything too seriously. Yeah, on, just, yeah. Yeah. on both sides. Let so, them yeah, people. that's just fans in general. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I guess this one is mostly just like. People need to chill mostly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay, so th- those were our unpopular, controversial opinions that me saying which, things asked us about, which was yep. actually pretty funny because we were talking about it that week, like yeah. in our chat, like doing it either because we'll, we'll probably do another topic from that Tumblr that we did like six, like a while ago. Yep. And yeah. we were talking about that, and we're like, maybe we should do our own. Um, and then she that they commented. Uh, I'm not for sure if it's a guy or a girl. Uh, they commented, um, Professor Elk, are you a boy or our, <laughs> <laughs> asking about our unpopular opinions? So um, yeah, if you don't agree with us, uh, be civil, but comment and uh, try to change our minds. As that yeah, meme, t- as that meme says, change my yeah, mind. As that mean, try to change Steven my Crowder. mind. I have I have my um, mug ready. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah, just comment and be civil about it. But yeah, we're we're definitely down to just have an open conversation about why you don't agree with us or why you do agree with us. Yep. And as long as you're not being an asshole, because if you are, we'll just ignore you. Yep. Um, if you're not being an asshole, we'll be down to talk with you and discuss uh, what you thought of our unpopular opinions yep. and try to change our minds. Yep. Really so quick. There it is. That was half the show. <laughs> yeah, that was half. Oh my god. We got, yeah, we gotta hurry. We gotta hurry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew that would be a long one. Reviews are short. We're getting pretty good about our reviews, so they're getting pretty yeah. solid. And this just shows all of her talents all at once. She's actually amazing. rapping again. She raps. Yes. Well, yeah, she always raps in her non her non OST songs, like all of her stuff that she's done for yeah uh, MFBTY. She raps like that's that's what she does. But she also.